All praise is due to Allah who has blessed us with Islam, who has given us direction with faith and who has beautified us with excellence in our religion. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. As Muslims, minimally, we pray five times a day. So minimally with two rakats of Fajr and then four of Dhuhr, which is six, and then four of Asr, which makes ten, and then three of Maghrib, which makes thirteen, and then four of Isha, which makes seventeen units of prayer. And in each unit, we're reciting the Fatiha. So 17 times a day minimally, and then if we add the Sunnah Mu'akkada, which minimally are 10, 27 times a day, and then if we add a Shafi wal Witr in the night time, that makes 30 times a day, we're saying the Fatiha. So 30 times a day, a, a day we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, or since we're Muslims already, probably most here, maybe excluding a couple of one or two guests, we're asking Him to increase us in guidance. We're asking Him, having guided us to the path, to keep us on the path. We're asking Him, having brought us to the path, to bring us to the end of the path. And the end of the path is our meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 30 times a day. Minimally. So if we multiply 30 times a day by 365 days a year, imagine the numbers. And then if we multiply that by 30 or 40 years, 50 for some, 60 for some, that we may be blessed to engage in a life of prayer and devotion over half a million times. Half a million times in our lifetime, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, to strengthen us, to affirm us, confirm us in the path. Half a million times a year, uh, in a lifetime rather. Half a million times. So the question is, each and every one of us should ask ourselves, are we sincere in that prayer? Because if we're 10 years in, and we're still wavering, something's wrong. We cannot ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to affirm us, confirm us in the path, to keep us on the path for 10, 12, 15 years, and still find ourselves with one foot on the path and one foot off the path. Are we sincere in our prayer? that we're making in this lifetime over half a million times. اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. It takes commitment. If we find one foot is off the path and one foot on the path, even though we're praying to Allah to keep us on the path, we have to ask ourselves if we're sincere. Being a Muslim, and is an expression of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we're honest human beings, period, leave aside the religious question. If we're honest human beings, then we have to be committed in our relationships. If we have friends, we have to be committed to our friends. And if we're not committed to our friends, we're going to lose those friends. We see it happening every day. If we're married, we have to be committed to our spouse. And if we're not committed to our spouse, we're going to lose our spouse. If we're employed, we have to be committed to our employer. And if we're not committed to our employer, we're going to lose our job. The employer says, listen, Lock up at night, turn the burglar alarm on, put the money in the safe. We don't leave the money laying on the counter, leave the alarm off and the door open. And we don't just do it. 
because we're going to get paid. We do it because we're committed to our employer. And if we're Muslim, we have to be committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to be committed in that relationship. We have to be committed to Allah, glorified and exalted is He. And if we're not committed, we're not going to lose Allah. Because Allah is present. We're going to lose our souls. That's the consequence of a lack of commitment in that relationship. So we're asking Allah to guide us to the straight path. And then Allah Ta'ala in the Fatiha, He lets known to us what that straight path is. Sirata al-ladheena an'amta alayhim The path of those whom in the past, it's a past tense verb. Sirata al-ladheena an'amta alayhim The path of those you have bestowed your graces on. In the past. In other words, we're acknowledging that what we're asking for is nothing new. What we're asking Allah for, people before us have asked Him for. And He's bestowed His graces on them. He's guided them to the path. He's strengthened them into, in the path. He's brought them to the end of the path. We're asking for that way. We're asking Allah Ta'ala to guide us as those previous to us were guided. So we're saying essentially what you gave to them, give to us. What you bless them to do, bless us to do. What humans have done, humans can do. Humans have walked this path before and they can walk it now. We should never lose, use the excuse, the times are too hard. It's too complicated now. We have television, we have the internet, we have all this mediated reality bombarding our senses. We just can't do it. That's an excuse. That's not a sincere expectation that a prayer will be answered. Sirata al-ladheena an'amta alayhim The path of those who you bestowed your graces on. Give us their path. Give us that path. If people in the path who've been blessed by God, if women can dress modestly in the past, women can dress modestly today. If people can stand for prayer in the middle of the night in the past, people can stand for prayer in the middle of the night today. If people can avoid fornication and alcohol and drugs and all of the other vices that are sending people astray in the path, People can do it today. And this is what we're asking Allah for. If people can stand in the face of tyranny, tyrants and oppressors in the past, people can stand in the face of tyrants and oppressors today. What human beings have done, human beings can do. We have to realize this, brothers and sisters. What human beings have done, human beings can do. And this is why the message of religion the message of Islam is as relevant today as it was in the past. This is why the Qur'an we read today is the same Qur'an revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and just as it was relevant for his community at that time, it is relevant for his community at this time. In the Qur'an Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, He lets us know in further detail, first he mentions the straight path. Sirat al Sirat al Mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. And then he gives us a little more insight as to what that path is. Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alehim. The path of those you bestowed your graces on. And in the Quran elsewhere, he gives us even more insight into that path and what it is with more details. Where he says, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَأُولَئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسَنَ أُولَئِكَ رَفِيقًا That those who obey Allah and His Messenger وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ They will be with those He has bestowed His graces on. So when we say Sirat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim, we're asking for this path. 
They will be with the ones Allah has bestowed His graces on. Who are those people? Amongst the Prophets. Those who truthfully testified and sacrificed and suffered upholding the message of the Prophets. And the martyrs. Those who gave their life standing up to defend and to proclaim and to, to, to introduce into the world the message of the Prophets was Salihin and the righteous wahasuna ulaika rafiqa and what an excellent company to be in some of us myself included in this room came out of a Christian tradition we converted to Islam from a Christian tradition don't raise your hands no excess movement in the Juma. Like, oh, I did, brother. <laughs> but some of us is true. And there was a song that we used to sing. We used to sing a song that went something like this. I'm not going to sing it. Or oh, when the saints come marching in. Or oh, when the saints come marching in. Oh, I want to be in that number when the saints come marching in. We're saying when the saints, we have a name for them in Islam, we call them awliya. And they include those four categories of people. al nabiyina wa siddiqin wa shuhada'i wa salihin. I want to be included in their number when they come marching into heaven. We should want to be included with the prophets and with the siddiqin and with the martyrs and with those righteous people when they go marching into heaven. Who doesn't want to be in that number when those saints go marching in? Who doesn't want to be in that number when those saints go marching in? We can be in that number. Allah says we will be in that number. فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ Allah says those who obey Allah and His Messenger will be in that number. That's all it requires. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, they will be in that number. When those saints go marching in. Brothers and sisters, the point is, are we living a life that conveys the impression, not to each other, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we want to be in that number. Are we living a life that reflects the teachings of the prophets? Are we living a life that reflects the sincerity of the siddiqeen? Are we living a life that reflects the courage of the martyrs? Are we living a life that respect, reflects the sincerity of the righteous people? We should ask ourselves, if we want to be in that number, then we will live a life that reflects those saints. And we will be in that number when they go marching in. Bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. By the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala, or the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, gives us further insight into one of these groups, the Siddiqeen. When he asked a group of his companions one day, when Abi Hurairah radiallahu an, an al Nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam annahu qal, so it's related by Abi Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, that the, the Prophet, may the blessings and peace be of Allah be upon him, he said, من منكم من أصبح منكم منكم يوم الصائمة قال أبو بكر الصديق أنا. The Prophet asked, صلى الله عليه وسلم, a group of his companions, who amongst you woke up fasting this morning? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was the Amir, the leader of the Siddiqin. He said, I did. فَمَنْ تَبِعَ مِنْكُمُ الْيَوْمَ جَنَازَةً Who amongst you followed a funeral procession today? قَالَ أَبُوْ بَكَرْ أَنَا 
Abu Bakr he said, I did. فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم من أطعم منكم اليوم مسكينا Who amongst you has fed a poor, poor person today? قال أبو بكر أنا أبو بكر said I did فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم فمن تصدق بصدقة Who of you has given something in charity today? قال أبو بكر أنا أبو بكر said I did فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم فمن عاد منكم اليوم مريضا قالوا أبو بكر أنا He said صلى الله عليه وسلم Who amongst you has visited a sick person today? Abu Bakr said, I did. فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَجْتَمَعْنَا ثِمْرَئٍ إِلَّا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet then said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, These qualities are not combined in a single individual except that individual will enter paradise. This is the way of the Siddiqeen. If we want to be amongst their numbers, this is the kind of life we have to live. We have to live a life that's dedicated to worship. That we fast, not just in Ramadan, it's Rajab now, and now it's on the, the back side of Rajab. The moon is starting to wane, having waxed full the last few days. Now it's starting to wane. Who, who amongst us has started to fast voluntarily? So that we meet Ramadan with momentum. The scholars say Rajab is the time to plant the seeds. And Sha'ban the next month is the time to irrigate and cultivate the crop. And Ramadan the next month is the time to reap the harvest. It's the time to reap the harvest. If you look at a, a relay race. The relay race the time is faster than one runner. Much faster than one runner. Why? Because three of the runners had a running start. So the world record for 400 meters, even though the one runner gets tired and the four are fresh, still it's a relatively short race. The, the world record for the 400 meters is approximately 44 seconds. The world record for four by 100 is 37 some odd seconds. So how do we account for the Tremendous disparity between the two times. Three of the runners in the 4 by 100 had a running start. So we should get a running start into Ramadan. We start fasting now. The days are long and they're fairly hot. We start now. We're done with the headaches, the stomach cramps in a couple weeks. We enter Ramadan. We're full speed. We meet it with a running start. We start reading our Quran now. Ramadan comes, we've made it a part of our daily routine. But if we start flat-footed, Ramadan comes, they've seen the moon. Tomorrow's fasting. Then two weeks with aches and pains and, and, and cramps and headaches. Trying to work out our schedule so we can work the Qur'an in. And then before you know it, the month is gone. Get a running start, brothers and sisters. So Abu Bakr said, I meant the day fasting. We have to have lives of devotion. We have to fast. We have to be regular in our prayers. We have to give... Uh, he said, who, who followed the janazah? We have to give people their rights. The dead, the deceased person has a right over the entire community. If a person dies, no one washes the body, no one prepares the body for burial, no one properly shrouds the body, no one prays over the body, the whole community is guilty of sin. So we have to be dedicated to extending to those members of the community the rights they have over us. He mentioned feeding the poor people. Who fed a poor person? Abu Bakr said, I did. We have to be people who realize there are those less fortunate than us in society. Alhamdulillah, there's a program here every Saturday. The people in the Rainbow Rec Center in East Oakland, hundreds of people are fed. Go there sometimes if you haven't been there and participate in that program. Go there and see families, not homeless people. Not people you might go to the park or the Tenderloin in San Francisco and feed. Families, women, children, fathers, who because of the, the rapacious nature 
of some aspects of this capitalist society have been cut off from having their means met. But there are people who are rising up to help meet their needs. And we should be amongst those people if we want to be in that number. So who gave charity? Abu Bakr said, I gave charity. Even if you're not working, you have some money in your pocket, put a quarter in the basket, give charity. Because if you give charity, Allah Ta'ala will give you something to give charity with. Even if you're not working, Allah will eventually give you a job. Because Allah Ta'ala loves for us to be charitable. Allah Ta'ala said, uh, or it's related, that Allah is kareem. And Allah had jameen yuhibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful, He loves uh, beauty. Where kareem yuhibbul karam. And He's generous, He loves generosity. And as long as we're finding something to be generous with, and we're finding something within our souls that pushes us to generosity, Allah will continue to be generous to us. Wallahu fi al abd, ma kan al abdu fi awni akhihi. Allah will continue to help the servant as long as the servant is helping his brother. Who went to visit a sick person? Abu Bakr said, I did. Again, people have rights over us. People shouldn't languish in the hospital or languish at home during their secret sickness without someone coming to visit, even briefly. And it's best to be brief, to extend a good word, to cheer them up, to pray for their, for their uh, cure in their presence. La ilaha illallah. This is Islam, brothers and sisters. This is Islam. And when we have a community that's articulating those realities and reflecting those truths, that's the community that alters the course of nations. That's the community that inspires people to say, I don't care what the Muslims believe. I want to be like a Muslim. So, well, you know, they believe this. I don't care what they believe. It's all good. No, one God, all the prophets, Moses, check. Abraham, check. David, check. Jesus, check. And then we completed with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the beliefs are all good, but people won't even care about the beliefs. They'll say, those Muslims have something that I need. Those Muslims have something that I want. Those Muslims are reflecting a quality I don't see reflected in the faces of people when I walk down the street. Whatever they have, I want some of it. And that's when, when a community is committed to those virtues, when a community reflects those qualities, not isolated individuals, but communities. Because when communities come together as righteous people, righteous men, righteous women, pious children, they come together synergetically. In other words, the sum of the whole is greater than the sum of the individual parts. If there's a million of them, they'll have the force of 10 million. If there's a million, they'll have the force of 10 million. Al-hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha. Good deeds are multiplied 10 times over. Allah Ta'ala, so we want those qualities that Abu Bakr said, I did, I did, I did. We'll mention in conclusion, Allah Ta'ala gives us further insight into the Siddiqeen. Those righteous people who testify to the truth of the messengers. Allah Ta'ala says about Mary, Maryam, wa ummuhu siddiqa, and his mother was a siddiqa. So we said we want to be in that number. What number? So amongst them the Siddiqeen, Siddiqeen, wa ummuhu Siddiqa. And his mother was a female Siddiqa. She was a female who testified to the truth of her Lord. How does Allah Ta'ala describe Mary in the Qur'an? 
وَمَرْيَمَ ابْنَةَ عِمْرَانَ الَّتِي أَحْسَنَ فَرْجَهَا فَنَفَخْنَا فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِنَا وَصَدَّقَتْ بِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّهَا وَكُتُبِهِ وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ And Maryam, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, أَحْسَنَتْ أَحْسَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا She guarded her chastity. We should be chaste people. Not lewd people. This society wants us to be lewd and indecent and bodacious. Allah Ta'ala wants us to be modest people, to be shy people, to be chaste people. To be chaste people who guard our chastity. And not just in a sexual sense, in a total sense. In a total sense. أَحْصَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا فَنَفَخْنَا فِيهِمْ الرُّحِنَا وَصَدَّقَتْ She's Siddiqa وَصَدَّقَتْ بِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّهَا And she bore witness to the truth of the words of her Lord. She bore witness with her speech and she bore witness with her actions. And we should bear witness with our speech and we should bear witness with our actions. وَكُتُبِهِ And his scriptures. We shall witness to the truthfulness of the scriptures. In a world where people are abandoning scriptural reasoning and abandoning scriptural wisdom, there's deep wisdom in the scriptures. We shall witness to the truth and the veracity of the scriptures. وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ And she was amongst those who were devoutly obedient. So she wasn't, Allah Ta'ala doesn't say, وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الطَّائِعِينَ She was amongst the obedient, وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ The qanit has an exaggerated degree of obedience and devotion to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Those are the characteristics that we aspire to. Those are the characteristics we aspire to. And again, to hit the mark, we have to be committed. Our religion is founded on commitment. One of the most powerful statements we read in the Quran. Allah Ta'ala says, addressing His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but as we read it, it's addressing us. Qul, say, Inna salati wa nusuki wa mihyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen la sharika lah wa bithalika umirt wa ana awwalul muslimin Say verily my prayer, my sacrifice, my living, my dying are all for Allah the Lord of all the worlds and with this I have been commanded and I'm the first to submit as a Muslim. That is a statement and expression of commitment. We read it, but do we mean it? Ask ourselves. And if we find that, well, yani, kind of, we should make sure we mean it, brothers and sisters, because we live in serious times. These are not times for wavering. These are not times for a lighthearted commitment. Those who are Half commitment will be fully swept off the tracks. This is a time for the train to move down the tracks with force, with power, with dedication, with commitment. This, this is the nature of our times. We have to be that train moving down that track. Moving forward with full, as they say, full steam ahead. And we're the ones that are knocking things out of our way. We're not knocked off tracks. Anything that's on the tracks, we make dua for it because this train isn't stopping. We're knocking. I was on the plane recently. I saw Denzel Washington, unstoppable. The runaway train. That train was knocking things off the track. If you didn't see the movie, don't go out and buy it. <laughs> but that train was knocking things off the track. We want to be unstoppable, brothers and sisters. Unstoppable. Ain't no stopping us now. Bismillah ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. 
Wali sa'ir al-mu'minin Ya qawm astaghfirullah Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wa salatu wa salam Ala sayyidi al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Tasliman kathira Inna Allah wa malaikatahu Yusadun ala al-nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina muhammadun wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us abundantly Never neglect to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his great blessings The Fatiha, there are many ways you can look at the Fatiha Many different ways One way consistent to what we've been talking about You can look at it as those who acknowledge Allah Bismillah And then acknowledge His mercy in their lives Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim And then they, because they acknowledge Allah Hu Allah And they acknowledge His mercy in their lives Ya Allah, you fed me, you've clothed me, you've educated me, guided me, taught me Put good people in my lives, life to do all of that Because they acknowledge that, they praise Him Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen And then they understand that His mercy Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Is not confined to this world alone Maliki Yawmiddin Allah has divided His mercy into 100 parts One part alone is expressed in all the mercy That's manifested by every creature in existence From the beginning of the earth to the end The other 99 parts Allah has held back for when our reckoning Our account is taken the other 99 parts of that 100, Allah has held back. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim for Yomiddin, Maliki Yomiddin. And so, those, there are two types of people those who acknowledge Allah, acknowledge His mercy, praise Him, and acknowledge His great favor and blessing on them on the day of resurrection. So, they are committed to Allah and they express that commitment. You alone do we worship and thee alone do we seek help from. And then there are another type of person and then they ask for the meeting with Allah. Those who struggle for our sakes, we guide them to our paths, the paths that lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there are those who reject Allah. There are those who fail to acknowledge and appreciate His mercy. And those are the ones who don't pray for guidance. They don't worship Allah. They don't seek His help. They try to go it alone. And they end up incurring His wrath. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ Or they end up astray. Why? Because of a lack of commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us be committed to Allah ta'ala, brothers and sisters. Let us be deeply committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let us translate that commitment to beneficial, helpful actions that benefit our fellow human beings and the other creatures. Animate and others, trees, the birds, everyone we share this space with. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا أفرغ علينا الصبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا أفرغ علينا الصبرا وثبت أقدامنا وتوثنا مسلمين وعفو عنا وعفو لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلف الدين وقهر الرجال ونعوذ بك من الفقر إلا إليك ومن الذل إلا لك ومن الخوف إلا منك اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك و 
ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعفو عنا وفي لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا المسلمين وأخوات أخواتنا المسلمات في فلسطين وفي العراق وفي سوريا يا الله في سوريا يا الله في الشام يا الله في لبنان في العراق في أفغانستان في باكستان في الهند في كشمير في كل مكان يا الله اللهم سور إخواننا المسلمين في أفريقيا في مصر وتونس وليبيا في في الجزائر في المغرب في السودان في الشمال في كل مكان في نيجيريا في كل مكان يا الله اللهم انصرنا في هذا البلد اللهم انصرنا في هذا البلد اللهم انصرنا في هذا البلد أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أكم الصلاة يرحمني ويرحمكم الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويوفي لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله All praises due to Allah who has blessed us with Islam who has given us direction with faith and who has beautified us with excellence in our religion Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen As Muslims minimally we pray five times a day so minimally with two rakats of Fajr and then four of Dhuhr which is six and then four of Asr which makes ten and then three of Maghrib which make thirteen and then four three hundred sixty-five days a year imagine the numbers and then if we multiply that by thirty or forty years fifty for some, sixty for some that we may be blessed to engage in a life of prayer and devotion over half a million times Half a million times in our lifetime we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, to strengthen us, to affirm us, confirm us in the path. Half a million times a year, uh, in a lifetime rather. Half a million times. So the question is, each and every one of us should ask ourselves, are we sincere in that prayer? Because if we're 10 years in and we're still wavering, 
Something's wrong. We cannot ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to affirm us, confirm us in the path, to keep us on the path for 10, 12, 15 years and still find ourselves with one foot on the path and one foot off the path. Are we sincere in our prayer that we're making in this lifetime over half a million times? <laughs> Guide us to the straight path. It takes commitment. If we find one foot is off the path and one foot on the path, even though we're praying to Allah to keep us on the path, we have to ask ourselves if we're sincere. Being a Muslim is an expression of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we're honest human beings, period, leave aside the religious question. If we're honest human beings, then we have to be committed in our relationships. If we have friends, we have to be committed to our friends. And if we're not committed to our friends, we're going to lose those friends. We see it happening every day. If of Isha, which makes 17 units of prayer, and in each unit we're reciting the Fatiha. So 17 times a day minimally, and then if we add the Sunnah Mu'akkada, which minimally are 10, 27 times a day, and then if we add a Shafi wa Witr, in the night times that makes 30 times a day, we're saying the Fatiha. So 30 times of day, a, a day, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, or since we're Muslims already, probably most here, maybe excluding a couple of one or two guests, we're asking Him to increase us in guidance. We're asking Him, having guided us to the path, to keep us on the path. We're asking Him, having brought us to the path, to bring us to the end of the path. And the end of the path is our meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 30 times a day, minimally. So if we multiply 30 times a day by...